Hey everybody, Jake here. And um, today we're going to take a look at a very, very large knife. This is the Cold Steel Colossus. This is an absolutely gargantuan um, pocket knife, I guess you could call it. Um, real quick, I do want to apologize for the tripod feet in the shot. But this knife is too big for me to um, get into frame without doing it that way. So, let's go ahead and take a look. I'll go over what I like about it what I don't like about it. I'm neutral towards and I'll give you a conclusion on this absolutely massive knife. All right, before we do that, we're going to go into a quick size comparison. So let me bring the Colossus down here. Uh, it's going to stick out a little bit, but that's okay. First up, the Victorinox Classic. Uh, I'm just going to kind of set it right on top there. This is a huge knife. Seriously, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, let's go with something uh, slightly bigger. This is the Spyderco Reinhold Rhino. And uh, honestly, this is, I, I can get a, a good three and a half finger grip on this knife and it's still absolutely dwarfed by, by the Colossus here. Something a bit more traditional. Uh, a lot of you may have seen like a grandpa or an uncle or a father have a knife. Uh, this is just a case. It's a copper lock lock back knife. Again, uh, nowhere close to the Colossus. Knife, real quick, that has been getting very popular over the last, that's a year or so. The Farron Forge Mass Drop Gent. A again, there's, there's very little I have in my collection that even comes close to this. Uh, the closest thing I have lengthwise is the Spider Coat Pison. And even it is not nearly as long as the Colossus is. Um, this thing is freaking huge. It's it's very, very big. Um, so now that the size comparison is out of the way, let's go ahead and go into what I like about this knife. First up, the Ergos. Holy crap, this thing's great. So there are three hand positions. Um, this is probably going to be the most used one. It's just gripping right along these, uh, these three grooves here. So index finger, middle and ring finger, and pinky finger down here. You can also move up one if you need to choke up for um, detailed work, which you're probably not going to be doing with this knife. Um, or you can go down one. And the only feasible thing I can see for this is for um, getting a little bit of extra leverage or uh, momentum if you're like hacking at something, which normally I would advise against with a pocket knife, but this one's probably going to be just fine um, for a couple reasons that we'll get into in a bit. Next up, the design. I really, really like the design of this knife. Um, I like the huge leaf-shaped blade. It's really, really cool. I love these handles. These handles are amazing. Holy crap. Um, it's layered black and green G10, but it's kind of... Let me see if I can get this a little closer. It's kind of like a... It looks like they ate away at it with acid or something, um, realistically. It's, it's very textured. There's a lot of depth to it. I even like the the kind of layers that you can see here between the black and green. If you look on the just the green scales on each side, you can see kind of layered black and green between those. And of course, you have a matching black backspacer. But these handles are just gorgeous, and they they feel really really good. Um, I, I don't normally dislike G10, but I'm normally kind of neutral about it honestly. But this this is great. Love love these handles. Back to the blade. I'm sure you've noticed. Um, this is a very high uh, mirror polish for a blade. You can see, even though it is a little, little dirty, you can still see my camera certainly there. And the the leaf shape is very, very pleasant. It cuts very, very well. It is a little bit thicker stock. Um, no, it's not too terribly bad. Um, if I bring back out the the Pison here, you can see it's it's pretty close in stock thickness to the Pison, but because of that massive flat grind, it comes down to be a lot thinner uh, behind the edge. Let me actually get that measurement for you here. Got some calipers. So let's go ahead and switch over to inches first, I guess. Looks like 0 0.02. So, despite 
this uh, again absolutely massive knife you're um you're really getting a pretty good slicer and that's the first thing i noticed out of the box with this knife is how well it cut um i like with most knives i cut a few things um it, as soon as i get it and this thing slices so so well it cuts through just about anything it really really does it's it's absolutely amazing let's see if i can show you real quick here um this is just a tear that off just a, a sheet of paper from a lego set and it cuts extremely extremely well it's as soon as it's able to get this is very flimsy paper sorry as soon as it's able to get in there it it cuts like a dream that's honestly probably one of my favorite things about this knife is just how it cuts that that blade is oh gosh um weight and size <laughs> i also like it's too big to carry um again if you're looking at this just closed and you're comparing it to a more conventional size knife again like the mass drop gent it's it's gargantuan you can fit the gent literally in the exposed blade part of the knife but that's not why you're getting this you're getting this because it's big and it's burly and it is you know so they they went for it they have a four inch blade on this thing and absolutely massive like six inch handle so overall length on this is going to be 10 inches it's huge and they they just went for it but even being a huge knife it's honestly pretty thin bringing back out the gent here not that much difference in thickness it it really <laughs> i'm hesitant to say it carries nicely but it carries very nicely for the size we'll, we'll leave it at that next up speaking of in the pocket um this thumb stud slash wave opener it does wave open and what that means is when you're pulling it out of your pocket it will catch right here hook and deploy the blade as you're pulling it out of your pocket um, it just catches on that inside seam of your jeans pocket. So you're carrying this right-handed. You're going to kind of push back towards the back of your pocket, pull, and it will deploy the blade as it opens up or as it comes out of your pocket. It does work. I've tried it in several pairs of pants. It works very well, and it's absolutely the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life, but it's great. Um, I don't know why you would be in a hurry to get this knife out, but, you know, if, if you were, that's that's one option. Um, and it does work fairly well as a thumb stud. I, I know some people have had issues opening this one-handed. I really don't have a problem um, getting to that one-handed or closing it one-handed, honestly. Um, once you get used to this lock, which we'll go over in just a minute, it's a little stiff to do, but um, I can actuate the lock, give the knife a little bit of a shake to where it falls, and then usually shake it closed. It's a bit of a pain, but it works. If, if you absolutely have to use this knife one-handed, um, you shouldn't have too much of a problem as long as you have decently sized hands. Last thing is the lock. Um, if if you just well, let me just let you listen to this lock up, okay? So if you open it, now let's compare that to the mass drop gent opening. Just gonna kind of open it the same way, just slowly. Very very little noise, and on the close. I'm gonna close on this. It's a very authoritative lockup. Um, either way, you know it's it's not too hard to get out, but I, I don't see this knife closing on you accidentally. And that's a big part of Cold Steel's marketing is their triad lock, which is what this knife uses. Um, it is a it's like a back lock on steroids. It's absolutely massive. Um, if you take apart this knife, it's it's huge. It really, really is. And it works very, very well. It's it's just like a very, very stiff back lock on a huge knife. And back locks are extremely strong, um, inherently more so than a frame lock or a uh, liner lock, something like that. So if you need that durability and you need that toughness, and if you're looking at a knife like this, you probably do, that's that's just a very, very nice feature to have on something this, uh, this big and beefy. Let's go ahead and go on to the neutral. Only thing here really is fit and finish. Um, there's just the tiniest of gaps between the uh, the lock back here and this left hand scale. Um, the clip doesn't sit perfectly flush on this side, whereas it does on this side. Um, there's just a few 
uh, again a little bit of a gap down here when you run your finger over it, it it's it's very little stuff but it's there um, right here where you have the thumb disc thing there's a, a gap when you run your finger up there's just a few things they could have done better um, again not not anything terrible but it's not perfect and for the price they could have certainly done a little bit better on this all right on to the dislike uh, there are a few things here but they may be kind of uh, deal breakers for y'all first thing that's the clip um, this clip leaves, leaves a lot to be desired I don't mind the length um, I don't really mind the shape what I do mind is it is a very tight clip and is over very very rough texturing so this is gonna murder your pockets when it's going in and out um, the good thing is it does sit in here like this so most of this knife is gonna be off to your side which kinda helps again with the wave opening um, but if you compare to a, you know, we, we won't even go deep carry. Let's just compare it to uh, another knife, just a regular knife. This is the uh, Tucson TS-80 Jaeger. Um, you can see your pocket's going to go up to about here. So you're going to have about that much of the knife sticking out. On this one, you're going to have like that much of the knife sticking out. So realistically, you're looking at like this versus this. And that's just an absolutely insane difference. But again, it's kind of a, a folding pocket sort of kind of comes to the territory, I get that. But they could have smoothed out the texturing underneath the clip and uh, added a bit more spring to it. Which was something this heavy, I guess you do want kind of a tight hold, but it's going to ruin your jeans or whatever other pants you're trying to put it in. Next up is just the name on the blade. Um, it's it's huge. It The branding on this thing is, you know, th this side isn't so bad, honestly. It's still pretty big on, on most knives. It would cover most of the blade um, but on this one it's not too terribly bad but this side right here is ridiculous it's it's literally like an inch and a half long of, uh, of branding on this knife and that's just a little excessive um, I know they probably wanted to make it big because the Colossus name and everything like that but they could have toned it down just a bit next thing up if you notice right here and right here those are pins they're not screws so when you're disassembling this, and you can disassemble it because uh, pivot screw and there's you know two screws there, and also same thing pinned on the back side, these kind of fall out when the tension is removed from them. I don't think that makes them unsafe. They're very very well held in there, but I really wish they'd done screws just for that that little bit of extra reliability and um, ease of removal. It's it's a bit of a pain to get those those pins out. It's just it's something small, but I really wish they'd went ahead and just used screws for that. I'm not sure why they didn't. But, you know, last thing up is the price. So, you can get these, depending on where you go to get them, for as low as $130 or as high as about $220. For $130, I think this is great, great, honestly, fantastic knife. Really, if you're looking for something really big and beefy, $130, bucks, this is where I'm going to send you every time. But at 220, I, I I don't know. There's not much else like it out there on the market apart from what Cold Steel is offering. But that just seems high to me personally. Um, you know there there are no liners on this knife. It's it's primarily G10, so they're saving a lot of money there. And I understand it's a big chunk of XH uh, CTSX XHP steel, but. I really feel like they could have came down on that a little bit. I would say somewhere between 150 and 170 is a, is a pretty fair price for this knife. If you can find it, you know, new for about 130, go ahead and pick it up if you're looking for something like this. And uh, let's go ahead and go on to the conclusion. So in conclusion, this is a crazy knife. <laughs> it really, really is. And it's fun. Um, if you're looking for an outdoor slash camping pocket knife, I think this is just a great, great way to go. Um, it, it really, really is. Um, I won't be keeping this one, to be honest, I, because I don't go camping enough to justify it, and I would never carry it normally. But I've got to say, I really, really like this knife. This is probably one of my favorite knives I've, I've ever reviewed, and if I had a practical application for it, I would certainly be keeping it. I don't, unfortunately, but again, if you do, if you have a reason to own this knife, just try it out. It's It's great. It's it's an absolutely excellent, excellent knife, and I really, really um, applaud Gold Steel for what they've done here. If you have any questions about anything, uh, just let me know down in the comments, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Bye.